The B cell has also a receptor which can identify pathogen or antigen. And the shape of the receptor is Y-shaped. It's not a H shape like a T cell. It has a Y shape similar uh, to antibody shaped. Antibody is also Y shaped. That's an important difference of the B cell and T cells. The receptor is completely different. It has a Y shaped receptor. Right, next thing. The B cell has another function. B cell also has B cell can act as a phagocytic cell. B cell can act as a phagocytic cell. So what phagocytic cell is doing, phagocytic cells we learn they can uh, engulf, they can identify uh, the pathogen, let's say this represents a bacteria, and the bacteria has this antigen recognized by this uh, B cell receptor, and we have learned, then it internalizes whole structure. After internalizing the whole bacteria, Lysosome secrete enzyme, lysosome digest the uh, structure of bacteria, and then uh, it collects the antigens. Now, this antigen can display on the surface of the B cell. So, when it displays on the B cells together with the MHC, MHC protein and antigen. They can show up like this. But here, uh, it's restricted at this point now. So what T helper cell did in the previous uh, lesson, it has the ability to proliferate, ability to mitosis, ability to undergo tonal expansion independent of help. It doesn't need help. Now, B cells stay like this. So in this case, activated, the effect T helper cell should come. That's why T helper cell first increase the number specific to this antigen. Specific to this antigen. Now, this is the T helper cells activated for effector. We call activated effector T helper cells. Then it bind to this antigen on B cell, and then it gives the signal again to the B cell. Cytokines. Chemical signal is given in terms of cytokine molecules. Now B cell can undergo same thing, mitosis, tonal expansion, proliferation. I use always the same term that you familiarize with the name, same, it's same thing. And what will happen? It produces millions of millions of B cells, specific for this antigen. So B cell number is increasing specific for this antigen. Now you see at the end, T helper, T killer, or B cell, specific for this antigen, increase within a short period of time into millions. And they can recognize only specific pathogens at this time because the antigens are specific. Uh, these cells are specific to only one antigen. Now, what is the role of B cell? T killer, uh, cytoxic T cell can kill the cells and release virus particles and can kill cancer cells like that. But B cell, a B cell is very important again. B cell is very important because 
any viral bacterial or any kind of a cancer whatever situation b cell are very important type of cells then uh, this effect b cell so effect b cell after proliferation it increase the number and there be effect b cells they can uh, further change the shell into different shape and they become something called plasma cell so b cell change to plasma cell first b cell activate and b cell uh, proliferate for this specific uh, antigen like uh, so this is the symbol i use for the antigen this antigen specific uh, T cell, uh, B cells change to, we can say differentiate into plasma cells. Now, what is the role of plasma cell? Oh, that's very important. Plasma cell can produce antibody. Specific for antigen. Now you see B cells change to plasma cells. Plasma cell can produce now antibody, the proteins, to this antigen. So, what is the role of the uh, antibody? So we have to further learn why it is important to produce antibody and what is the role of antibody. Okay, antibody is a protein molecule. It made out of several polypeptide chain. For example, uh, it has a which is this one. So it has a polypeptide chain and the polypeptide chain is like this. So it make a this shape structure. And another one, again uh, folded to make another similar uh, chain like this. And another uh, polypeptide folded to make a short chain like this. So it has a four polypeptide chain. A four polypeptide chain joined together, then you know this has a, a primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure. So this has a quaternary structure because uh, several uh, protein subunits joined together to make the quaternary structure. Now the quaternary structure uh, further stabilized by uh, this kind of a disulfide bond. Uh, we don't want to learn too much detail about this uh, structure. And here uh, it's an uh, antigen. Okay, I just uh, only highlight this place. This is the uh, antigen binding site. This is antigen binding site. So it has a uh, two identical antigen binding site. One here, one here. Now, as we mentioned before, the epitopes that mean uh, uh, the polypeptide chain of the antigen like this, and it has several antigen binding sites, for example, here, 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 like this. Now, this is the antibody. If this is the similar site, it can bind here, and this similar site, it can bind here, like this. So, antibody can bind to the antigen. That's what we are uh, always telling uh, antigen antibody complex. So antigen, antibody, 
complex after it binding. So why antibodies are very uh, important? They are very specific. They are highly specific to the antigen and they produce in a large number. When there's an infection, B cell change to plasma cells and they produce um, billions of molecules and they release into the blood. Antibodies produce very faster by plasma cells and then release into the uh, blood and circulate all over the body. Antibodies are circulate all over the body because antibodies are very powerful weapon now to the immune system. Right, next, uh, we're going to learn how antibody help to kill the pathogen. Now here, uh, I just want to write one thing, right? Very clearly, I should, I, I want to uh, give this idea. Antibody cannot kill pathogen. Antibody is a group of proteins. It cannot kill pathogen. I think uh, uh, if you go to this one of the choice of the MCQ question previously. Ah, uh, here, look at this uh, number four. They can directly destroy specific pathogen in blood. Antibody can directly destroy specific pathogen in blood. Now I said, Antibody can, cannot kill pathogen. So antibody cannot kill the pathogen. That's wrong. Now we take a first choice. They have a several epitopes for binding with specific antigen. So they have only one epitope. So I said, uh, they have only one uh, specific site and but there are two identical. So here I said, two identical binding site. It's just one, right? because they are both same, they're no different. So they can, let's say if there is a antigen like this shape and the same shape, it can bind to the other side because they have a two binding site. They don't have a several uh, epitope or binding site to antigens. So they are specific for only one, uh, one epitope, specific for only one antigen. So that case, uh, this is bit again confusing. Uh, first choice. Uh, they have several epitopes. Actually, they have a two binding site with specific uh, antigen. So when it says several, uh, more than two. So it has only a uh, two binding site. Those two binding sites are again identical. So it can bind with only one epitope. It can bind with only one uh, binding site. And there are two because they're identical. So that's also wrong in this case. So you have learned this, they have a Y-shape structure, but T cell has H shape. It's not the same as T lymphocyte. This is also wrong. The antibody has Y-shape structure, T lymphocyte receptor has H shape structure. Uh, third one. We didn't, uh, we didn't learn yet. So we have to come back to that later, but uh, they bind specific antigen to activate complement system. We already found the answer to this one, but still uh, we cannot neglect negative points because a negative point is a uh, one word missing of a positive point. That's a slightly, this one, two, three, four may be wrong, just only with one word. So it is always important that we have to learn 
which word is uh, incorrect, which meaning is incorrect, right? So that's how we have to really uh, learn MCQ. Then only you can better with confidence, you can write answers, you can give the answers. Okay. Right, uh, this is the antibodies. Now, how this antibody helping to de uh, destroy the uh, pathogens? Now, I just want to uh, make a very clear again uh, thing. The immune system, uh, the most powerful thing of the immune system is Phagocytosis. Because so far, you have seen phagocytosis is the only, pro only process directly kill the pathogen. Antibodies can't kill. T helper cell cannot kill. Uh, cytoxic T cell. It only destroy the infected cell or maybe uh, in uh, uh, cancer cell, uh, the host cell. There is a little bit of uh, uh, room we have. Yes, NK cells and uh, cytoxic T cells. They have ability to kill the infected cells, but not directly pathogen. They can't kill directly pathogen. The pathogen is killed by the uh, phagocytic cells and B cells, uh, they also not involving in a killing process of the pathogen, only phagocytic cells, phagocytes, they can do this. So what is the role of then uh, antibodies? So antibody, uh, many, many, many fold increase phagocytosis process. Antibody can increase maybe a hundred times, maybe thousand times the phagocytosis process, right? So uh, overall, the antibodies increases phagocytosis. So that's the main uh, mechanism of uh, antibodies. They can increase phagocytosis. Now, how? Question is how they increase. Now, I tell you uh, one uh, one uh, point. Let's assume uh, these are the bacteria. Now, when antibodies are produced against this bacteria. These antibodies can bind like this to the bacteria. Now, what you see now, if antibodies bind like this way, because it has two binding sites, they trap into one place. The bacteria trap into one place. Uh, this is called agglutination. Now, what, what's the next event? If the phagocytic cell comes, they can phagocyte complete complex like this. A phagocytic cell this time is not going to take one by one, it takes whole complex. That's a one method. And the second method, if there's a toxin produced, let's say this is a toxin of the pathogen, antibody can bind and neutralize. So there are other methods we don't want to learn. At least the resource book, it says only neutralize the antigen, uh, neutralize the uh, toxin. They neutralize the toxin. 
So I give uh, another most important thing is the agglutination. So toxin neutralization is one thing, but you should understand what is the role of antibody. They enhance phagocytic process by agglutination or clumping or just trap all these uh, bacteria to one place. So that's how antibodies increase the phagocytic process. Now, it's an end now. It's an end mean. So far, when we look at the activation of the immune system, the adaptive immune immunity, B cells, T cells, uh, cytoxic T cells, T helper cells, all activate. And you have seen the end process. End process is uh, production of antibodies by B cells. Cytoxic T cell can uh, kill the infected cells. And B cell continuously producing the plasma cells and T helper cells continuously activating uh, these cells. So it keep on continuously activating uh, T, uh, T, uh, cytoxic T cell and B cell. So we don't have uh, any other weapons. This is the only uh, main process to remove the pathogen from the body. So this process keep on going until we can completely eliminate the pathogen. As you know, most of the people infected with the virus or bacteria get cured and certain people, uh, they die. For example, uh, 100 people infected with the commonly uh, existing diseases like uh, COVID-19 or dengue, like common diseases or malaria-like things. Uh, at the moment, uh, one to two people die because their immune system is compromised. Immune system is not uh, really active. Immune system has a defect. As a result, uh, they cannot survive. But on the other hand, what you learn here is the main mechanism of removing pathogen from our body. From innate immunity to adaptive immunity, these are the main players. So if there are other players, uh, we can learn in the advanced biology, but uh, you can understand there's nothing much uh, powerful things than what we have learned. Antibodies, plasma cells, activated B cells, effect B cells, effect T cells, effect uh, cytoxic cells. So these are the main players. Then the last thing is, if immune system completely eliminate, immune system completely remove the pathogens, kill the pathogens, what happened to these cells? We have uh, millions of millions of uh, B cells, plasma cells, T helper cells, T cytoxic T cell produced, specific for this antigen. Then all the cells, uh, they are not keeping the number. So all the cells, again, uh, uh, removing from the system and certain group of cells, certain group of cells in this uh, activated cells going to stay. So these cells, for example, uh, uh, if you try to, oh, Here, uh, these cell increase, T helper cell increase uh, in large number, then cytoxic uh, T cell increase in large number, B cell increase in large number, and then plasma cell increase in large number. Now these cells, again, we do not want to keep in the body because pathogen is not in, in our body. So general immune system keep less number of cell specific for antigen, for different antigen. Immune system do not keep large number of cells specific 
for antigen. So it's only a small number key, but uh, these cells, for all antigens, we have a small number of cells. Now what will happen when the immune system uh, clear, uh, clear the pathogen? Uh, these cells again decreasing in number. The helper cell again decrease because system can uh, recycle the cells and remove uh, cells and bring it to the, again, normal level. So uh, cytotoxic T cells decrease in number, B cell decrease in number. However, a uh, certain uh, level, these cells, that mean uh, T helper cells, cytotoxic T cell, and B cell. So these three main type of cells, get some kind of uh, different ability. And this ability is called memory. So memory T helper cells, memory T uh, cytotoxic T cells, memory B cells. So these cells stay at certain level. And uh, at the moment, uh, we have a strong evidence, B memory cells, uh, are the strongest cell they can keep in the body. So uh, we can't say how long they can keep. If it is a lifetime, is it one year? Is it five years, 10 years? That depend on the pathogen. Some diseases, uh, mostly lifetime, some diseases, uh, it's for a short period of time. Some diseases, uh, probably 10, 12 years. These cells stay in our body, uh, keep in the memory. Now, why the memory is important? So if you want to understand what is the role of memory cells, uh, we should learn when we infected with first time, we exposure to disease for the first time in life. We get sick, we get a fever, we get a headache, <clears throat> maybe other signs like vomiting and other things, we observe. And we know after six, seven, eight, nine days maximum, most of the diseases we recover. We recovered after a week or a little bit later, we recovered. Then, uh, these cells are uh, left in the body and also certain level of antibodies. So antibodies also stay in the body for a certain time period and the B cell can still make antibodies. Antibodies stay in certain level for a long period of time. Now, this situation is like this. So I need more space to write. Can you uh, right, I'm going to tell you uh, what is important of the memory cells after an infection. Uh, this is the time. And now here, infected at this time point. So in this axis is the immune response. So immune response start, and then uh, it takes time, and then uh, again decrease certain level, and we here recover. So infected are recovered. So our body keep certain degree of memory like this. So that's what I refer to the memory, B cells especially, and T uh, helper cells and T cytotoxic T cells and antibodies stay certain level in the body. Now assume again for the same infection, we expose at this time point infected again. Now this, if it is infected, 
we discuss a uh, whole uh, activation from first line of defense, second line of defense, inflammation, adaptive immunity, that won't happen. So that won't happen. Instead, the memory cells make a big response within short period of time. And you don't feel even you get sick. You don't feel you get sick because the immune system within a short period of time, all these things are there, they can reactivate. They only, they don't want to start from the beginning, just to reactivate. So that's a primary response, that's a secondary response. So this is due to memory. So we do not feel even we get sick because the immune system quickly identify and it has all these uh, weapons. So within a very quick, uh, within a hours or few hours, it can activate again and then uh, quickly remove the pathogen. So that's how uh, it works. Okay, uh, so uh, what we discussed so far is end of this uh, immune activation, the whole process and most important thing, the next lesson, uh, we're going to learn uh, what are the different type of immunity. One of the different type of immunity is not exactly the whole process. It is slightly different one. Example, if we expose naturally to a disease, that's one type of uh, immunity. And you know very clearly, we can also protect against pathogen by giving vaccine. So vaccine is what kind of immunity then? So natural infection is what kind of immunity? So likewise, there are several group of immunity uh, we have. And all these immunity, you will see certain degree of the whole process is there. That means if you go back and uh, try to step by step, uh, write down the process, the first line of defense, innate immunity, the barriers, all these things, and then the internal immunity, first line of external and internal, inflammation, and inflammation and role of uh, chemicals and cells. And again, it goes to the next level to the adaptive immunity. Adaptive immunity, again, we have a cellular immunity and the humoral immunity. So finally ended up with production of antibody and the memory. That's the end. Production of antibody and the memory is the end. So here, a long process, step by step, we learn. So, in type of immunity, we're going to learn uh, not whole uh, whole process is one type of immunity, and we can also uh, make protection at different level, not coming from the first level. That means uh, if this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So we are not coming exactly like this. We can also uh, make immunity at this level, fifth level, antibody, antibody, giving antibody. This is a kind of immunity then. If you give antibody to specific antigen to a person, inject antibody to a person, that's a kind of immunity. So we're going to learn in the next lesson, uh, type of immunity, uh, then only uh, you can, uh, 
understand the leftover choice of the question. For example, they can be transferred to another person to induce immunological memory. So this like thing you can answer uh, if we learn type of immunity. Okay, uh, so all the classes of these uh, lessons, you can uh, watch again and again this uh, if you have a time and complete your notes and everything, notes are given. Uh, I have sent the notes. Uh, I will also upload this uh, lesson uh, tomorrow. So then you can have it. And uh, again, uh, we're going to continue uh, next week. Hopefully we can finish immunity and we start the next uh, lessons, uh, excretion. And uh, we try to add the question now. As we know, uh, we try to add in each lessons. We're going to enrich with some questions. I mean, halfway after that, we can start questions. We don't want to wait until end. So we try to take one by one in the next, uh, like these questions in each lesson. Uh, even previous lesson, uh, I can take like uh, digestion, take one question like that. And uh, we try to do uh, questions, uh, another way of learning it, right? Okay, so I'm going to stop and see you again uh, in next week. Okay, take care and uh, check the videos if you miss something. Okay, see you.